Salama, Siemi, Shalawam, Shalom. Greetings, my Israelite brothers and sisters around the world, whether you are grafted in or of the bloodline. So I come to you today in a little bit of sadness and an introspect because many of you, I'm sure that's listening, have heard the news about Breonna Taylor and the lack of charges or lack of justice that was given to her and her family. So I can go on and on about the events of what happened, how things happened. I'm sure people are more versed. But I want to to try to examine the spiritual implications that this has, because this, even though it's a singular incident, it has an overarching spiritual impact on us. Now, whether you are grafted in or whether you're the bloodline, this is showing the Most High's redemptive plan to bring his people from out of captivity, to bring his people from out of bondage. Whether you're doing so and you're fleeing, as in Jeremiah 51, verse 45, or you are awaiting the Most High to bring you up on out of here. In my opinion, either or is acceptable. If you have the money, get on out of here. If you want to endure to the end, that's fine. If you want to see the end, that's fine. Because we have to see how things are moving in this nation. Because the Bible says that this thing is going to be an incredible feat. The nations are going to be astonished. It says even Babylon is going to be confounded. And that's Jeremiah 51 and 47. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and the whole land shall be confounded, and her slain shall fall in the midst of her. The heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoilers shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. So it was interesting. Um, Teo had something going on, <laughs> a live going on right before the verdict or the grand jury indictments were handed down. And what that grand jury, grand jury indictment proved it proved something that we have seen, but we don't like to really understand because it's hard. Nobody wants to realize the day and age that they're in. Nobody wants to see what's done to us and take that into account of all the things that we have gone through.
And so we have to understand, see, our, our people's bodies are laying, are laying slain in the streets. And if you listen to what the attorney general had said, and, and again, listen, you have to understand the attorney general's playing his part. Just because you are of the bloodline, it doesn't mean anything if you don't have the spirit. Because you may already know, he may already know who we are, but a lot of people's hearts have gone cold and callous, including our own. And, you know, the sad thing is he's going to have to face judgment. And a lot of folks, they're not realizing they're put in this position to receive the riches of the world right now, but then they're going to condemn their soul later on. Because, see, things sound really good. Things sound really good when you're on top when judgment hasn't struck. But when judgment strikes, oh, it won't look so good and it never looks that good. And so what I titled this was Trump, the dictator America deserves because I had in my spirit, I didn't do any videos for a couple of days because honestly, the most I was like, wait, wait. And there was a stirring in my spirit because, you know, I knew something was going on. I just didn't know how tremendous it was going to be. And so because I really didn't understand the veracity, I didn't understand the, the amount of pain and sorrow that would be on the people. And, and let me explain this to you. There's, there's two different types of pain and sorrow in this dynamic. See, the pain and sorrow for us is the pain and sorrow that we're starting to see because we're starting to understand that this Bible isn't a white man's book. We're starting to understand that this Bible is actually a strong, compelling argument. That it's our book that prophesies about us, that tells, tells us about who we are and where we will be as a people in the time that we awaken and cry out for the most high to deliver us. It shows what, that, that color of the people because it shows who their Elohim, their most high, Yahuwah, is that sits on the throne. And when you Google the definitions of Jasper and Sardin and Stone, it matches the same characteristics of what's in the Bible. Brownish, orangish, yellowish people. The same skin tones that many black people have. From the dark, dark browns to the light, light browns. Now, do you, not only that, it shows the conditions of what our people will be living in. That our blood and our slain will be upon Babylon. And so we know that the Most High has put us in this position 
because we disrespected him. We dishonored him. And then all of our enemies round about, they come past us. They held us in derision. They held us in a state of suspended animation, of not knowing who we are. And they played games with us. Oh, it will get better if you vote. Ha ha ha, yeah, right. See, you can do everything you can, and guess what? You'll be able to make a difference in this country. Ha ha ha, yeah, right. You know, the sad thing is, the joke was literally on us for these last 70 years. Oh, they came on up, they got a little bit more powerful. Um, We'll do like this thing called civil rights and voting rights, and we'll make it look on paper that everything has changed. But we'll tell our generation, say, lay low, lay low, lay low, and you'll get your opportunity, we'll get your chance. The dragons of Bell, they laid low. And then now they're in a state of perpetual devouring of our people. And it doesn't matter who looks like us. If their heart is for the dragon, they're going to be working for the dragon. If their heart is for the system, they're going to be working for the system. No, that's called um, uh, uh, that's called uh, law and order. It's called law and order. Okay, then dissect where these maladies came from. Dissect what this system has done to us. Dissect it. Well, you know, everybody has their part. That's not good enough. Because when you really look at it and you see how the deal goes down, all we've been saying has just been materialized within this last year. Because you got to understand, judgment is actually revealing. If you can put that into this context, judgment is a, is a, is a revelator or a revealer. See, the Most High has to reveal things to you before you go into judgment. And this ties so much appropriately to the message. I want to go into Daniel 4. Daniel 4. I, and and I, I, I stress it enough. I can't stress it enough. What we have as scriptures. And so Daniel chapter 4, verse 1, it, it comes on out. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations and languages, that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. See, how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. See, if you knew the context of Nebuchadnezzar and you knew the and you know the context of where we're sitting at right now. The physical Babylon had been eventually leveled. It was eventually destroyed in its physical concept. The same with Egypt, the same with Sodom. However, the spiritual concept remains because there are people 
that try to promote the dragon system that has literally been our enemy since before this time began. And so what they will do, they will carry on out those customs, those traditions, and the whole secret society enclave, the whole Mason enclave, the whole, you know, skull and bones concept. You know, all these little stupid things that as black folks, quote unquote, we have little to zero representation in. Because they understood they have to run this thing secretly in order for their agenda to be met in the open. So I'm not going to be sitting here as a conspiracist and all this other stuff. I don't need to be, because guess what? It is self-evident. They can't do anything with these fires. They can't do anything with these hurricanes. They can't do anything with these with this pandemic, no matter how much they try to push a vaccine or they try to push for normal C. See, when the deal goes down, a lot of people don't like to read the scriptures. That's just how it goes. But you have to understand that's just their heart because their heart understands. I can't read the scriptures because if I read the scriptures and I see what's happening in this day and time. Oh, Christ will give me salvation. Yeshua HaMashiach will give me salvation in the second death. But I'm steaming towards the first one. And I may not even really have salvation in the second death because I hate his people in this first, in, in the first one. So they're literally getting the double whammy of the whole concept of the word of the most high. And the the way I see it with Brianna Taylor, why are we getting mad at something we already know was going to happen? If anything, this just proves the point. You have to be on your knees praying. This illustrates the point. Let the Most High judge this nation. See, when the deal goes, when the deal really goes down, and you look at Jeremiah 51, because it's a telling tale, we're the ones, our people. are the ones that saying, look, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. That's Jeremiah 51 and nine. We would have healed her. We got to heal her. We got to heal this nation. We got to vote. We got to vote for our own destruction. Keep voting for our genocide. Keep voting for their plan to destroy us. You understand how folly that is, how 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 foolish and simple that sounds. And we've been saying it. Hey, we need reparations. That's the first thing in you healing yourself. Because you want to know what the most high says? He says that the thief. They'll pay their, for their iniquity. They always do. Even to what? The third or fourth generation. You hold on to that ill-gotten wealth, it's going to visit your family, and you will feel the effects. 
I don't care who you are. How many stories do you hear of on CNBC or Bloomberg? And these folks, their wealth is just draining their pockets. We're actually in the middle of a of a stock market downturn because here's the thing. They couldn't manipulate the stocks forever. No matter how much they tried, and believe me, they tried. And they have been trying. That's what that economic stimulus was for. It wasn't for to put in people's pockets. Because here's the thing. I'm not going to put in the pockets of black people. In the Kamala Harris voice, no. Can't put in the pockets of, of black people. I'll give you a little something, something, but I got to put in the pockets of my people, my dragons. Of Bell. Understand the system. Their wealth is depreciating and decreasing. And, and in some cases, it, yeah, it's evaporating because they can't understand it. Because the Most High is diminishing all their stuff. You have appliance shortages. You have shelves in the supermarkets continuing to empty on out. Products that are never coming back. Goods and services that are never coming back. So tell me, what do you think is actually going to happen? Well, you're going to have to start thinning the herd. That's what they like to say. Thinning the herd. But how do you thin the herd? War. See, in their mind and in their calculus, it's going to be war. (laughs) War, whether bought internally or existentially, it's always going to be war. You know, I brought up the whole thing from Deagle and say what you want to say with it. I think somebody let the cat out the bag and like, okay, well, who's going to see this? Because when the deal goes down, you can't say that we never lied to you. We disclosed everything. We were 100% truthful. It's whether or not you wanted to dig and research it and, and promulgate The numbers. No, no, that sounds sketchy. That's real sketch. Now I ain't going to believe that. Nah, in five years, shoot. Yeah, right. Man, that's that's if we have 100 million. Because the way I figure... We probably have a lot more black people than what they're saying. We probably have like, this is just my opinion. At least a third of our population are black folks. At least. See, what I truly think is our population demographics, I truly believe that they're around 40%. Because I truly believe that their population rates have hit the wall, have grounded to a halt. That's part of the, that's part of the curses. That's part of judgment. They're never going to disclose that to you. But you saw the symptoms of these judgments. See, the funny thing is, <laughs> they can lie all they want. But when the deal goes down, it's always shown and figured out. What's done in the dark always what? Comes to the light. 
No, we don't have any population decline issues. It's 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 good. We're we're good. We we're good. They were saying that for the last ten years because they knew that their stuff hit a wall back in two thousand and eight. Do you understand? That was their last sustainable rate for numbers in the United States. And it's not to say that our group of quote unquote black people aren't, we're not being reproductive or we're not reproducing. Oh, we're reproducing. And I believe even with the numbers of us reproducing, even here in this nation, that delta is so low. that they're potentially within the negative rates. And then you saw in 2016, the report came on out. Oh, there are more deaths than births. Wow. See, you got to understand, they can lie and lie and lie, but guess what? The truth finds them out. And then the truth finds them out and where is a Toys R Us at? Anybody seen one? The last Toys R Us I saw was in the Middle East. And not here. You can get your stuff from Toys R Us online. They just consolidated into a, a big warehouse. But remember, it was places like Tours R Us, KB Tour, all those places that were declining. I remember KB Tour was was already on the the economic fritz for quite a while. And then it was surprising to see, well, Tours R Us also has the economic issues. And that was very stunning. But then you also see that Disney had economic issues, but you had to understand a lot of Disney's products and services are manufacturing. Dolls, toys, Who hasn't been to a Disney store in your favorite major malls? It's there. But you got to understand the retail wasn't there. Because you have to understand, for all intents and purposes, their clientele outgrew without more clientele backstopping and continuing that sales growth. So now Disney says, you know, it's in trouble with its movies and manufacturing, all this stuff. Yeah, because here's the problem. Not that many people have kids anymore. It's noticeable. They projected all these schools, all these schools. It's going to have all this high capacity and everything else like that. Look at it. Go, go into a kindergarten class and just look at it. Not that many. Go into a kindergarten class in the suburbs and you'll see who's actually declining. Go into a third grade class. And you'll see it. And and it's actually more pronounced because because my youngest daughter, she was born in 2008. And I've looked in her classes and I've peeked in her classes. 
the demographic dis differences is really appalling. I wouldn't say appalling. I mean, it's astounding. I'm not appalled. <laughs> I would say astounded. It's, it's astounding. But we were starting to understand, okay, what they're saying doesn't meet reality. And see, we were getting mad at the fact that, look, one of these folks want to tell the truth. Here's the here's funny thing. Black people and people in general, the truth is not in them. It never was. It's not found in them. It never was. It never will be. In the words of the Bible, it never shall be. These folks are going to go down to the grave denying who? Denying Christ. And, as, and what uh, Ashanda Large had said on her broadcast recently, that's, that's part of the great falling away. Because here's the thing, we're going to be enlightened as to who we are, raptured, quote unquote, according to the Oxford Dictionary. When I did a a video essay on that a couple weeks ago. The definition's right there. To enlighten, to, to have an understanding, to have a knowledge, to have a vivid outcome of something that was hidden. But then we see in Psalms 83, they conspired against who? Thy hidden ones. Well, you hid, you hide, and then it comes to light. Because why? The scripture says everything hidden in the dark will do what? Will come to light. <laughs> do you see how the, the scripture comes by, through so many angles? The Most High comes through so many angles to do what? To fulfill his word. Now, you know what the funny thing is? That's actually called rule of law. That's actually called policy. And why do you think that their policy is terrible? Because it's not built on any type of biblical truth or foundation. They say it is. They try to proclaim it was. They tried to do all the best that they could to line up the Pat Robertsons and the T.D. Jakes and, and, and the Creflo Dollars and, and anybody that they could within the quote unquote Christian or Romanology community. But you got to understand, everything that's a man-made system falls. Because here's the problem. The application of the legal definitions that they were real quick to say is fair and balanced is not fair and balanced. So when you're trying to say that the rule of law is applicable for everybody and applies to everybody, it doesn't apply to everybody. So the natural response of, well, you know what? I want to have things done my way for me and not for them because it was built for people that look like me and I have a president that looks like me. That's enforcing what I want to have enforced. Then you're going to have drum roll, a dictator. Do you do we actually understand this equation here? You know, in, in my military career, we would come up with um, how things were done in terms of leading to war. And we would always kind of push that terminology in those military educational standards to where we were looking at an existential 
threat and our approaches to warfare conflict was based on really that approach only. And, and I would say, and I would argue that we have an ideological failing within our society because we never quite understood how those countries, when we saw them falling apart, when we would see a Burundi, when we saw Russia falling apart, they fell apart. When we would see a Myanmar, a Burma, a Vietnam. All these countries that fell apart internally with really very little pressure and very little external pressure. They just up and collapsed. Why? Because you had somebody that was trying to be a dictator. And generally, when you have someone that has the dictatorial attributes, they're going to act on their dictatorial attributes. So not only do we have Breonna Taylor, but we have Trump saying, well, you know, um, even if He loses the election. He may not give up the power. That's a bold statement. But you want to know, here's the thing. It's not a bold statement. Trump is actually just fulfilling what the scriptures say and how we would be taken on out of here in this, in our last captivity. We already knew that he was the last Pharaoh. Ain't, ain't no more after this. And you can see it every day. It just exemplifies everything that, that Teo, Dante, Sister E, we will now with Pastor Kelly, Ashonda Large, Brother Robert, Brother Christian, when he's writing his books, it all just exemplifies it. Because here's the thing, we are living in the prophetic. And, and you know, I, I had to think about this. I said, you know, I do kind of just go off and I'll kind of capitalize on some teachings and stuff like that. And then I had to have some interest, some introspect. I'm like, man, am I just really just biting off the teachings and then just kind of, you know, saying my own things and everything else? And then I realized this, no, because here's the funny thing is, we're all biting off of the teaching, which is the Bible, which are the biblical sources. But we just see what's happening, what was declared in the Bible. We just see it going on right now in this day and age, in this present day and age and so yeah it does look weird yeah it does feel feel funny it smells funny but we're seeing it and it's coming so rapidly the push is coming so rapidly that now you see it and it's hard to really comprehend it because it's like Man, yep, fires are still going. Yeah, stocks are still plunging. Yeah. Now they're saying, get ready for the next flare up. That's the Caribbean. So you got to understand the flare ups. 
late in the season, that starts to hit Florida. That starts to hit my neck of the woods. But you have to see, see, God is methodical. He'll take on the, he did it within the, the coast. Just to kind of tease you. And then he'll, he'll, he'll send a Dorian to really scare you. And now he's going to start unleashing his monsters of storms. You thought Dorian was bad. You ain't seen nothing. And I pray for all my family members, all my Israelite family members, whether you're, whether you're the bloodline or grafted in. I pray for you this hurricane season because you got to understand 2017, 18, and 19. Now we're in 20. This is the year of judgment. You, you heard it. You had a time to prepare. See, the most high isn't. He's not, a, he's not an unjust God. He's fair. He gives you time. Gives you plenty of time. He gives you plenty of space to read things. He gives you plenty of space to repent. But see, we knew this. We knew this was coming. We we saw this was happening. If anybody didn't see that this thing wasn't was was happening when we we're constantly quoting Genesis 15, 12 through 14. See, the funny thing is, I came on the scene back in April. And I was reluctant because I was still on active duty. I was reluctant. I was like, do I really want to talk? Do I really want to say this? Do I really want to? How am I going to approach this? How am I going to do this? But see, the funny thing is, is that there's a lot more folks on active duty presently that understand this. They see this. And they're wondering to themselves, man, how's the Most High going to save me out of this? And I, I would tell them, I said, look, you don't have to worry about that because God is good. And he knows what he's doing. You don't need to. He's doing it. And so when you see all these things happen, you see all this stuff occurring. You see that there's things that were beyond the control of what the people in power thought that they could control. And you know, the funny thing is, is that these protests, they're not for the quote unquote equality or equity. It's because they're literally the ones that are out there on the street protesting, they're embarrassed. Wait, we wanted to have white supremacy, but we didn't want it to look like this because we don't want to embarrass ourselves throughout the nations. Do you hear anything from France? Do you hear anything from Germany? Oh, trust me, they say something, but it's not going to be ever, ever reported on the mainstream media. They'll make sure that what they say isn't translated into English and broadcast out to the masses. America, we don't want your brand of racism. Matter of fact, we don't want your racism. We're trying to condemn racism in all forms because we understand we can't be calling African nations s-hole countries because guess what? We do business with them. And we've done that, done it that way for millennia. And it shows you they've they've done it that way for millennia. Josephus, Jasher. Africa is their resource. They need it. Okay, we'll just we'll 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 put the brakes on this. We'll go we'll rewind this. We'll we'll, re, we'll rethink our strategic relationships. That's the key word. And we'll try to do things that's a little bit more fair and equitable. They know that. 
Why do you think that they're returning these these statues? Why do you think that they're returning returning these artifacts? We got to do something fair and equitable because here's the problem. We don't want to be judged like America. We're in the system of Babylon, but we're not in that particular nation that Babylon embodies, and that's America. Now, we're going to be hit. We're going to be hit when that dollar hurts, but we can kind of recover relatively quickly and continue to establish trade with Africa. So what are we going to do? We're going to... Man, we're 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 taking off, we're shucking off, we're we're stripping off every bit of that American ideology nonsense. And we're coming back to our senses because man, we got drunk so bad off of the racism. They get appalled when they see the racism because they know, dang, we have to explain that to our we have to explain that to our African partners those 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 countries those african nations china was real quick to try to say look we're we're sorry about everything we 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 we're, we're going to try not to send you all as many criminals to the african nations on the continent uh uh let us know what else you need oh they <laughs> Oh, they turned down the racism. It ain't all the way gone, but they turned it down. Hey, these black folks are up to something. Don't don't get don't get on their their bad side, or, or get shut off because we don't really have much here in Asia. That's it. Besides fishing, they don't really have much. They are a dumping ground for uranium byproduct, lithium byproduct. That's why they make all those batteries there. And by the way, if you hadn't noticed, computer parts are really starting to lag and languish because guess what? All those battery parts and components, they're now be beginning to get scarce. Scarcity, famine. It's a drought on technology. And if technology is coming to a drought, you already know that the food is next. But you have to understand, look, I don't really don't care about Trump. I don't care for Trump. I really I don't even care about these elections because I already know what it's going to produce. All I'm trying to say is, you have the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar. And that's the embodiment of the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar. Somebody had to come on and take the role. Somebody had to come on and take the mantle. Because that's what this nation was all about. It was always about this. 400 years is up. We know that. Now we're seeing judgment. Now, whether or not we're asleep, it doesn't matter. It never said everybody's going to wake up and they're going to they're going to be good. No, it said, look, these folks are people. We were going to be crying. Why did God take us on out of there? What, what, what happened to my church? What about passages? What happened? What? They're going to be crying. Hey, let's listen. Get over it. We got to move. Unless you want to sit here, cry and die. That's your problem. But I'm going to listen. I'm going to hearken to the voice of the Most High. You want to follow Tariq Nasheed and stay here and fight for a, a, a land that was destined to be destroyed? <laughs> you go ahead and you fight for that. Ask how many people stayed in Chernobyl. They had homes there too. Stay there if you want to. Dying from all sorts of radiation po poison in weeks. No, this is my home. I'm going to stay here. Okay. Because see, a majority of black folks will be like, Shh, yo, they're dying and I'm not trying to be one of them. 
God gave me sense. The most I gave me sense. I'm out. I can plant in my land that the most high has given me a great land. If we thought America was, was decent, where the most high send us, sends us is going to be the best. Not second rate. He says the best. I'm good. Y'all can keep this. I'll be all right. I'll be fine. I'll down. I'll download a couple of um, Bob Villa's books. I'll download a couple of house building, construction manuals, things of that nature. Order some 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 table saws. Order some miter saws. Order order things I need to to have for industrial equipment. I'll be good. We'll get these floor joists set up. We'll get these found the foundation laid. We. Black people can build now. Black people can build now. And most of our work is still seen today in the South with plantations that are still being occupied in those mansions that are still there for them, not us. So all I got to say is, listen, I, I came through with this message. Um... We're just seeing what's going, what's happening in, in in our in our last times here, in our last moments. It's really our last moments here, because as Teo had had brought on up, um, it, a lot of this stuff is very dynamic. And so, all I got to say is, look, when you're seeing all these things happening, this is this is us. We have to pray more. Listen, I feel defeated sometimes. These last two or three days, I said, Lord, are you ever going to do anything? You ever going to work anything? And, 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 and the most I said, look, patience. I can't have you talk. I can't have you say anything, but I need you to have patience. And, and this isn't to condemn my um, grafted in Israelites. It's not. You still have the same access to Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach that we have. Didn't the centurion, didn't the centurion servant get blessed? He said, he said, Lord, I'm a man under authority, just like you. I told him here, they go there. I told him there, they go here. I, tell, I, I command things and it moves. And then Christ has said, he said, look, because you've shown great faith, your servant's healed. He answered, he listened, he answered. That was actually the very first interaction of bringing your petitions and concerns to the Most High through his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. And it was exemplified with a, with a Gentile. Look, in this whole space of us being the people, There's a humility that we have to achieve because it it has always been about saving souls for the kingdom, not saving souls for the Romanology whose idol is Cesar Borgia, but for the kingdom of heaven, the most highest kingdom. And as we see that kingdom actually coming to fruition, there's going to be two kingdoms. There's going to be the beast kingdom and then God's kingdom. They already said that. No ifs, ands, or buts. But this, the distinction will actually be 
There will be no clutter. There's going to be literally geographic lines, geographic delineations of them and of us. That's where this thing is shaping up to. And then that's where the whole earth will know, okay, I'm going to stick with them or I'm going to come on over to the righteousness. There's no sin in them. They, they abhor sin. They, they, they detest sin. Matter of fact, they're, walk, they're working and walking out their righteousness. And that's something that, that I love to see. They're not trying to say all these crazy things that they hear the Pope say. No, they're going off of what the word says and the living, breathing examples of it. And they're showing the love and the kindness and the righteousness that was always meant to be shown. So in conclusion, if you like the content provided from Covenant Awakenings, please like, share, and subscribe. Visit us at covenantawakenings.com. I see a lot of folks actually visiting, and, and I've been trying to post things on in there, like uh, some of the, the biblical references from um, Benioff, Israel, um, and, and, and other historical references. I want to have that as a, as a better consortium. So you, you see those things that, that you see, and you can, you can get the biblical context to what is being shown. And so I know uh, Teo does the same thing. His is a little bit more in terms of prophetic. I'd be a little bit more in terms of uh, contemporary. And, and that's okay. It just furthers the, the kingdom. It furthers the agenda. Nobody's here in competition with each other. I'm certainly not. Look, if God says tomorrow, hey, I need you to stop. Okay, I'm going to stop. But what I've heard from the Most High is he wants me to keep rolling. Because trust me, <laughs> I ask every day, Lord, can I stop this yet? Lord, you got some, something better for me? <laughs> we do. We, we, we have to ask, man, Lord, I'd rather just be all, just perform my perfunctory motions. Just be all surprised like the next one. But God said, no, that's not how it's going to be done. Look, because here's the thing. You go all the way. And it's not to say that other people don't. It's just that, man, my heart is something different. My heart is something different. Look, when I'm in that fire, I'll walk like, like Isaiah 43 and 2. I'll walk it. Man, God, you had me in here. So guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean on you. I kind of complain a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Father, man, you got this. You're going to do something. <laughs> I kind of get a little bit belligerent. And that's, and that's, 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 just, that's just the nature of, of flesh. But I know in the end, the Most High is good. I know in the end, he listens. And he doesn't deliver the way that we want that delivery service to go. We, we think that we can say, okay, God, we done made the, the purchase. Please send that tracking number so I can look at it on my uh, FedEx or UPS tracking app. Okay. <laughs> Blessings Transportation Inc. <laughs> yes, the Holy Spirit made an app. It's available on your, your, at your, your, at your Apple or Google. For download, if you made a, a spiritual request, the Most High is going to deliver like Amazon. But that's what we think. We think that God has is an Amazon manufacturer for blessings. Lord, I, 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 I prayed. Is it at your fulfillment center yet? <laughs> How many robots, I mean angels, are, are working the order? 
I hope Michael and 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 Gabriel are, are are overseeing this. If I need to submit a customer service inquiry, but that's what we think, and and that's not the case. But I'd also like to say thank you for those that do um, give and donate. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. I appreciate that, and I want to do more because I I just spoke with uh, with Teo. And and really, I don't have the the income to make all these gargantuan um, donations. I don't have a regular job like many of us right now. I don't have a regular income like many of us right now. I'm looking for a job, but God is still blessing me with with income, with things that come in for provision, and I want to take that provision and bless others. And I know that uh, Kingdom Harbor Ministries has a format to do that. So I would say for those that are asking for help, for funds, that you go over to Kingdom Harbor Ministries um, YouTube or webpage, and, and I'm sure that they will have some resources there to help because he's he's really about helping our people so with that family i like to say many will go here and there to increase knowledge it's daniel chapter 4 12 and 12 and 4 excuse me <laughs> after reading out of daniel chapter 4 but yeah that's daniel 12 and 4 but you see this look these prophets knew they knew what was coming they knew this day but they knew that we had to walk this thing on out it's not easy when you are blessed matter of fact because we know we're blessed we better understand we have the we have the the worst challenge in history but it's not for our our glory it's for his Hallelujah. So shalom, salama, siemi, shalom. Peace and blessings, Israel.